Howdy friendos, my name is Stuart, and welcome back to part two of our look into Dragon Ball Z abridged characters. If you've missed it, and I don't blame you if you have, my channel has been dead for a little while, I have been posting videos again, and the last time we talked about alignment, I was examining Team Four Stars Dragon Ball Z abridged Son Goku. As you can tell by the title and thumbnail, you're not an idiot that you clicked on it for nothing. We are looking at Piccolo from that same series. Specifically, we're looking at Piccolo Jr., who is the son of Demon King Piccolo from the original Dragon Ball series. Now, again, fortunately, we don't really need to know too much about that original series because we start on Dragon Ball Z and Piccolo Jr. doesn't know really much about what happened during that time. Fortunately, that doesn't matter too much because after the death of King Piccolo, he went ahead and regurgitated an egg that he shot into a forest that spat out a child, and that child is our Piccolo Jr. Now, Piccolo Jr. at the start of Dragon Ball Z is only about seven years old or so. At the last moment that he fought Goku, he was only three years old and he reincarnated the memories of the original King Piccolo, they fought at the World's Martial Arts Tournament, and to be honest, it really didn't amount to too much other than just a really good series of fights and a highlight to end Dragon Ball on. However, at the start of our series, at the start of Dragon Ball Z Abridged, Piccolo has been spending five years out in the wasteland not bothering nobody. And to be honest, during the tournament arc, he didn't really do anything too drastic, at least not to my memory. <laughs> I have won! And we're gonna lean him a little bit towards neutral evil, just a little bit, not too much, maybe like right on the edge. Again, there's only so far you can get being evil when you've been spending five years in the wilderness just talking to Tom from MySpace. But with that out of the way, let's go. He is on Namek. Wait, where is he? On Namek. Why didn't it bring him here? You must be specific. Wait a minute. A body! Social activity! Damn it, I'm lonely. Might as well check MySpace. In episode one, Piccolo is minding his own business, updating his MySpace until he was interrupted by Raditz, who leaves just as quickly as he was introduced. Bored of training, Piccolo follows him to Kame House. He then teams up with Goku and tries to defeat Raditz in exchange for a friendship on MySpace. Although Piccolo apologized to Goku for having his son kidnapped, this is a motivation out of survival and bribery, not altruism. True neutral. Piccolo? You use weighted training clothes as well? No, Goku. I just love to get naked when I'm around you. The duo then duke it out with Raditz, but unfortunately for them, Raditz is so fast and so strong that they cannot catch him or deal any damage. Goku uses his strongest grappling technique, the full Nelson, to hold Raditz down so that Piccolo can use his ultimate technique. Now what's funny in the anime proper is that Goku understood that he would die in this moment. However, in the abridged series, I'll give you a signal. It'll be the last signal you'll ever get. <laughs> well, okay, as long as we're clear on that. Piccolo did not extend him the courtesy of a warning, so he gets a chaotic evil. Another fun note about changing things for the sake of comedy. It does change the ding a bit. In the original series, this would have gotten him a lawful neutral. Possibly a lawful evil. Goku? Holy crap. I'm not the first person to die in this series! After Raditz and Goku are dead, Piccolo kidnaps Gohan and begins training him to be his pupil. Again, this was changed from the original series, where he was actually training Gohan in order to fight the Saiyans. In this series, he's just taking him because he's strong and he wants to rule the world. I'd say kidnapping a child in order to take over the world is neutral evil. Please argue with me on this. Listen up, runt! Today we're going to commence your intense training under me. But wait, wouldn't that cause horrible muscle degeneration for somebody my age? Crippling me for years to come? You're a wordy little bastard, aren't you? Piccolo's training was less than stellar. Basically a bunch of chaotic evil child abuse. Which does result in an amazing running gag. Dodge! 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 Not a joke, I've been using the dodge gag in like nearly all of my TTRPG writings. It is an advanced technique in my Keymaster class, it is a mythic ability in my Apotheon Mythic class, and it's a Battle Bride rally in my Complete Waifu Handbook. Speaking of which, you can pick up all of these digital books over on our website at LoadingCrewCrafts.com. The Complete Waifu Handbook is a 352 page book compatible with 5e as well as Pathfinder 1st and 2nd editions. The Keymaster Ultimate Bundle along with the Mythic Path is nearly 100 pages of Pathfinder first edition Dragon Ball style goodness. It lets you play as six different races, the Keymaster class, the Golden Warrior Prestige class, and the Mythic Paths that let you play something close to Super Saiyan Blue and Super Saiyan 4. I actually have a goal this year to sell a thousand more of my books by the end of the year. I'm actually 
closer than you think. So if you guys could head on over to the website and pick up one of these books, I would suggest using the coupon code MYWAIFU for 10% off your order. However, just so you guys know that shilling in the middle of an alignment ding, as well as Pavlovian behavior to adjust the training of a young child, is both neutral evil. Oh, for God's sake, now he's just standing there looking at the moon like a red puppy. I was trying to teach him to fend for himself, but no! He has to be a weak, defenseless little witch! He's getting bigger. Gohan turned into a great ape one evening. Unable to control him, Piccolo destroys the moon out of frustration. He then tears off Gohan's tail and gives him some new clothes and a sword. All of this grants him a chaotic neutral, because in the abridged series he had no idea that any of this had any correlation. Clothes beam! That is easily my most metro attack. Piccolo's diabolical scheme to take over the Earth is interrupted by Vegeta's diabolical scheme to steal the Dragon Balls. Piccolo isn't thrilled at the idea of helping out the Z Fighters. However, since the Earth will be destroyed if he doesn't help beat Nappa and Vegeta, Piccolo has to grin and bear it, true neutral. They're coming right towards us. But why would they be headed our way? They're probably seeking to eliminate the strongest power level. But my dad's dead. I was referring to me. The Z Fighters gather to defeat Nappa and Vegeta. It's not going very well. Yamcha dies, not that it really mattered. Tien died and Chiaotzu died. No, no, Chiaotzu! Ah, oh, dang it, Vegeta, you self-destruct. I hate it when they do that. Nappa is about to kill Gohan, but Piccolo does the body block technique and <laughs> it's a technique. But Piccolo body blocks the attack, sacrificing himself and putting the Dragon Balls out of commission. For sacrificing himself, we're gonna give him a chaotic good because he gave up the Dragon Balls for this. Piccolo even mentions that he could just grab Gohan and move him, but he doesn't. <laughs> All right, now that you have arrived on my planet, we will begin your training. Tenshin Han, Chao Tzu, 20 laps around the planet. Piccolo? Go to hell, I'm meditating. Keep doing that. Once Piccolo died, he visits King Kai for training. During the following time skip, Bulma, Krillin, Gohan, Vegeta, and Frieza all head to Namek to gather the Namekian Dragon Balls. Meanwhile, Goku was so badly injured during his fight against Vegeta that he had to wait a month for Sensu Beans to grow. Then he made his own trip. Piccolo, during this time, doesn't do anything for about 10 episodes. He's actually fully removed from the story and pretty much is just meditating. This does actually make him significantly stronger, so we're gonna give him a true neutral for this? Listen, if you wish me back, then that wish is Kami back. Then you can use those Dragon Balls to wish these morons back. Which leaves us with two more wishes! Let's wish them to Namek! Wait, what? Wait, what? After Goku arrived on Namek and defeated all of Frieza's men with Vegeta's help, Gohan and Krillin summon Purunga. Realizing that the Namekian dragon cannot multi-riz, Piccolo has the brilliant idea to resurrect himself and Kami. For some goddamn reason that I still do not understand, Goku, Krillin, but in the anime proper it was Piccolo's idea, which doesn't make it any better, summons Piccolo to Namek. Now on Namek, Piccolo absorbs Nail, feeling great, and as a result, increases his power level. He arrives just in time to help Gohan, Krillin, and Vegeta, decking Frieza in the face and helping them stall him until Goku is well enough to fight. I'm actually gonna give Piccolo two neutral goods throughout this entire fight scene, since he was a fairly active participant and kept Gohan and Krillin alive the entire time. You're a cheeky little monkey, what with your silly martial arts. But you know what the difference between you and I is? You can punch a board and it will break in half. I can punch a board and wipe out its entire race. After an extensive and slowly losing fight, a fully recovered Goku joins the fray. Frieza kills Vegeta and at Goku's request, the remaining Z fighters stay out of the way until things get to their worst. Lawful neutral. Ah! Oh no, if Goku can't focus on the spirit bomb, he doesn't stand a chance. I think the issue is less about him focusing and more about staying alive. I don't get it though, where's the ball? Goku is overwhelmed by Frieza's power and attempts to create a spirit bomb. Realizing that this is happening, Piccolo steps in and does his best to buy time. Goku charges his attack while Piccolo gets his glue bark pushed in. Eventually, the spirit bomb is dropped. Frieza is seemingly beaten, but suddenly isn't. By the way, not dead. K thanks, die. <laughs> but we're gonna give Piccolo a lawful good for the attempt anyway. What? Welcome back, Nail. Where am I? May I hug you? No! While this is happening on Earth, Popo resurrects everyone that Frieza and his men killed. 
except Krillin. Then Dende, completely independent of any divine influence, uses the Namekian Dragon Balls to teleport everyone on Namek to Earth except for Goku and Frieza. Piccolo becomes the main protector of Earth until Goku returns, earning him two solid neutral goods. Piccolo then heads off into the mountain and trains by himself until the next time Earth needs a defender. We're actually gonna give him a lawful good for that one, even though he's kind of cold to nail. Honestly, Piccolo Jr. in Dragon Ball Z of Bridge may have had a few extra spicy decisions made at the beginning, but if I'm being honest, he might actually be a bit more consistent than he was in the original show. I know changing him from Gohan's trainer to Gohan's kidnapper in season one was due for the sake of comedy, and him killing Goku was also for the sake of comedy, but Honestly, it's it's a little bit more consistent. Even by Team Four Star's own admittance, they think that having these lingering dark thoughts after years of harboring nothing but hate for his rival is a pretty good interpretation of the Piccolo Jr. arc. Really, after the World Martial Arts Tournament, Piccolo just kind of kept to himself for about half a decade without really doing anything. Even if you count the Dead Zone movie, which is a movie that admittedly doesn't break canon, but also isn't canon, Piccolo doesn't really do much to assist without outside of being a homeless bum who's training. But yeah, despite the early seasons being a little rough around the edges, Dragon Ball Z Bridge still holds up and does one of the best interpretations of this character, like, honestly, ever. And honestly, I gotta hand it to Lanny Pator too, who does an uncanny interpretation of Chris Sabat as Piccolo. There's actually an interview out there where Chris even admits that it, it's unreal how close he is to the original voice. Whenever I think of the Piccolo voice, it is very, very difficult for me to suss out like, who is speaking between Lanny and Chris? But yeah, despite the early seasons being a little rough around the edges, DBZ Bridge still holds up. And you know what? We'll talk more about it when we come back for season three, upcoming in December. Thank you to the patrons. Please check out the complete waifu handbook on our website, and I'll see you all next time.